Hello and welcome. Today we are running a new episode of Eve Just Chatting and I have a guest and before I actually do the pronunciation of that name wrong, I'm going to directly hand over uh, and let him introduce himself uh, to the show. Eve, thank you so much for having me. My name is Al Irizari, so I look after the partner go-to-market for our end-user computing division of Broadcom. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Love your content. Good. Um, let's directly dive into it. Um, there have been a lot of talks around end-user computing and VMware in the past. And how would you best describe the current situation about how is your relationship within the Broadcom group and VMware? And how does all of that are linked together? Uh, because you're obviously not sold yet. So, I mean, that's not hopefully changing throughout the weekend. But what's the current status? How does work and everything look like from that perspective? Yeah, great question. Uh, to answer that, I think it's important to kind of give a little bit of uh, what's happened in the last 60 to 60 days, essentially the last two months. Um, the transaction on November 22nd started changing some policies immediately. And in that policy, a lot of exceptions was, were included around end user computing. As you just mentioned, we're on track to have a divestiture from Broadcom. So it means we're, we're actually an independent autonomous business within Broadcom today. And this is actually separate to VMware business, although we are transacting on the same programs, which we'll talk about as well. Um, so really over the last 60 days, we've been absolutely, and even before then, actually investing in our partner program teams, our teams, our sales teams, ecosystem and sales. In addition to that, preparing for what is our next step with obviously the divestiture uh, being made public in December, and then ultimately in January, there were updates being given around the program and exceptions for UC. I think it's critical that uh, our partners and our customers understand we are independently working on our own transactability and, and programs in general. And of course, um, moving into the new world, which we're super excited, lots of excitement and focus around uh, obviously our next phase, our next chapter. So that is to come. Um, we obviously don't have any specific uh, news to share there yet. Uh, but when we do, it'll be obviously uh, a track for the next chapter for the end user computing. And just as a reminder, that's obviously the Workspace ONE and Horizon Solution focus areas, the platform that we call the Anywhere Workspace. Mm -hmm. So as you just said, it sounds like, um, um, so you now have your own sales organization, you built up your own support and everything else. So it's really run as a completely independent, like an independent company, it's just a Broadcom sign at the top and, um, and from that perspective, which I think is also opening up a lot of new opportunities because I, I heard often in, in a lot of the talks is like, yeah, we are, in certain areas too depending on that we actually need to wait for other decisions by other business units or we cannot actually move forward because X, Y, Z. So it sounds like it's it's also going to be um, a, a good portion of a relief to actually be a bit more independent and actually that the unit can actually take more of their own decisions moving forward, even in things like roadmap, which products, which features are coming. Absolutely. In fact, now you mentioned roadmap. Um, we traditionally have had a annual roadmap essentially as a business within VMware business unit. Uh, now as an autonomous business, we're looking at a three to five year roadmap, allowing us to really identify the innovations in the space and ultimately the growth within the end user computing markets. Uh, so that's a critical difference to where we've been. And then ultimately, uh, there are a lot of things that we're diligently working hard at work right now in identifying all the systems and, and essentially moving and shifting it and creating a net new um, instance of how we support our customers, how we support our partners, how we develop incentives. But by and large, I think it's critical uh, to note, Eves, that our program will continue for EUC in a similar fashion that we've had it, but we're going to make enhancements along the way. So we're not looking to we're, we're not in a position, we're not going to launch a net new program immediately. And that's key because we want to make sure we support our customers and partners that trust our platform, ensuring that you have continuity. And then more importantly, we're enhancing that as we go. So, and, and one of the things I know that you speak to in your content is a lot around our service provider models. And that is actually for end user computing, one of our priority. We see a lot of partners throughout our VMware Explore meetings, our partner advisory council meetings, really speaking to differentiated value through managed services or even just one-time services even on top of that, which is another reason why another investment area, because that's something you have asked me, 
is um, is really around partner-led services, knowledge transferability, support for identifying how we actually are going to grow with our partners at scale. And that means evolutionizing even our services organization, our support, and our customer success and our SE organizations to help support across the board. So we've taken the partner DNA within our new autonomous business across all the parts of the business to make sure that we can help deliver uh, to our customers and obviously to our partners. So, so you hit uh, very shortly on, on the topic of education because there was a bit of a confusion because we, um, as some might know, we actually have seven instructors on our team. Some of them are actually um, just running the, the end user computing space. And one of the confusions which, had, uh, which, which was hitting us was um, that basically VMware, and again, it's now two separate units, um, VMware basically said it's like there is no horizon training. So I guess you are actually going to take over the education and certification and pieces like that inside of end user computing, and it will just potentially get new names. But I'm expecting there will be trainings moving forward as well. There, there will be, and, and not only trainings, but also opportunities for our, our instructors, our partnership instructors that do our VATC or VERPS, uh, essentially the access, the education uh, products. So we're going to actually continue that. So. You asked me specifically around uh, creating an autonomous business. Those units actually now exist within end user computing. So consider there's an enablement team for partner and customer uh, together that we will continue to evolve those programs. In fact, we're looking to simplify uh, in terms for end user computing, uh, an opportunity that we have is actually taking our three pillars within our virtual desktop and apps, our unified endpoint management security, and our digital employee experience and simplify the ability to understand your business, looking for those partnerships that maybe you're interested or identify and have specific expertise in one of those pieces and not all, but helping them grow along the way. So we, we've had a very big platform approach on the solution focus. We want to make sure that we're focused on those business outcomes. So yes, we'll have our own enablement uh, teams with amazing leadership that uh, is already over. Uh, we've gotten amazing talent uh, to help you support on those education pieces. Wonderful. Um, the other thing, as you said, is like, so there will be continued um, um, investments into MSP. So so that means most likely people will not have the experience led, like what some MSPs now had on the other side is like, oops, the following SaaS services are no longer going to be accessible. Because as far as I understand, especially around Workspace ONE, there is more a notion to do more in the SaaS oh. space rather than actually getting off the SaaS track from that perspective and actually expand that and integrate partners and sovereign clouds and stuff like that into that a bit more. Can you maybe elaborate a bit more on that part? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we see the biggest opportunity from our ecosystem health in terms of our service provider business. Now that can span across <clears throat> excuse me, larger resellers that want to have a differentiated offering that expands into a lot of our larger strategic partnerships that are looking to help deliver uh, along with potentially hardware and software solutions bundled, embedded, ISVs. I mean, it, it spans across. And when we think about our service provider model, what it really is is a, a doorway to get access to our SaaS solutions. And that's our priority. Number one, we're going to continue developing, innovating within our SaaS space. And in addition to that, obviously, there's considerations around Sovereign Cloud, which we have projects uh, currently in run and ultimately also conversations that we've had in the past and conferences as well around that. Uh, but in addition to that, really considerations on how do we actually um, help our service providers, not only by providing them the, the education and the onboarding and ultimately the support, but also the resources, the telemetry, the information around um, uh, consumption data in terms of our solution. Our, our North Star on the service provider model is to scale. It's to allow you as a service provider, also our partners at whole, to be able to combine their IP with ours and have a differentiated value. And we want to support that even more. So even on the, as a service provider providing and getting support from us is also evolutionizing and identifying how we take a look at that different. We're, we're in a unique position, a significantly large SaaS-based organization, you know, very high ARR base that we are now have the ability to make it our own for the future in a modern framework. And I think that absolutely makes sense. And I totally get why on the infrastructure side, it's a different story. And, and I think that again also makes, makes much more clear why it perfectly makes sense to have 
these two work streams, let's say the, the, the VMware infrastructure business and end user computing separated from each other because they cater for different markets, at least as the markets currently develop. Um, so a question which typically, and most likely it's always, it's always hard um, to, to answer, but um, as, as Broadcom actually is, is, is making massive, yeah, not necessarily product cuts, but actually trying to streamline SKUs and everything else, um, can we expect something similar on the end user computing side to make it more simplistic? Because I know from the past, it's like, you have a lot of flexibility, but again, that's always the point. It's like, if you look at a BMW, you can get thousands of different extras and combinations and not all of them work together. Or you can go to Tesla and they basically tell you, it's like, here is four colors, three different tires and two colors for the inside. And we only allow you five combinations out of these. <laughs> yeah, no, I I can't begin to tell you. At times I feel like I need a, a degree by itself to figure out the 7,000 plus SKUs, right? Um, you're absolutely correct. Uh, I think we're gonna have that opportunity. Uh, is it going to be immediate? Probably not. It's going to be a, a gradual, uh, as we look at our backend systems and the capabilities and ultimately increase and enhance those, that will allow us to be able to rationalize and support a lot of that. I'm having great discussions right now, even around with our product teams to help identify uh, partner offerings that we need to be able to have enabled to allow that flexibility. And now as an autonomous business itself, it gives us even greater flexibility to really look at and partner with VMware solutions and others to be able to move forward uh, and allow for more flexibility for, speaking of flexibility, even though we need to make it easier, right, for the SKU proliferation, um, we'll continue having additional flexibility to allow more customers to take advantage of our solutions. Yeah. And I, I guess one more thing, which is um, it has always been a bit on the edge um, because, it, I mean, we announced together with, with VMware and BMW two years ago at Explore in Barcelona, the BMW VDI in the cloud, bringing 10,000s of desktops into the Azure cloud. But that was actually kind of, it always felt like a bit of a, of a uh, like scratching point between the, let's say, legacy VMware and that approach because it was, it's like it was Horizon but it's running on a different hypervisor and yeah. it's actually, or not hypervisor, it doesn't even, it doesn't matter what it runs on, it runs on some other platform, in that case, Azure. Um, and I know that you're planning or, or working with, with AWS on similar scenarios. So does that also mean that most likely we can basically have, we can see more flexibility in these spaces moving forward? I mean, you will still be vSphere because a lot of the customers Absolutely using vSphere, but actually, can we expect that there will be more openness to other platforms as well so that customers can really utilize the advanced features of Horizon and Workspace One on an even broader spectrum of, of platforms? Uh, absolutely. I think that's my expectation, right? Moving forward, we will have uh, the ability to uh, even adapt to a greater uh, landscape of ecosystem opportunities and hypervisors, et cetera. But more importantly, we continue to support and have a solid uh, foundation within our vSphere and VCF solution stack. So with that, will continue. Um, and we're gonna have an opportunity to take a look at uh, even further as an independent business unit or business, excuse me, um, that will take us into the future. Yeah. Um, and as you speak about VCF, and I, I guess I know the answer on that one already, um, but um, from a customer perspective, in the past, it was, I was used that I buy actually um, Horizon and I could actually buy it, including the underlying vSphere, vSAN and pieces like that. Will that still continue to be an option for me as a customer or do I now need to actually rush to two different parties, buy a subscription for VCF from the one hand side and actually then get Horizon from your side? No, great question. That's actually been top of mind for a lot of our partners. Um, absolutely. So we will continue. We're going to continue working with VMware on that and ultimately uh, develop that moving into the future to understand how we can give the flexibility of acquiring licensing and ultimately the uh, solutions like vSphere for desktop and, and vSAN, vCD, et cetera. Um, more to come on that as I think that as we think about your previous question on you know looking at our SKU availability and what we're going to be doing. Um, I think that's going to be top of mind, top of mind for a lot of our customers, obviously our, our partners to be able to support that. Okay. Good. Um, one question which just came into my mind in the last couple of days, do you know if we can already manage an Apple Vision Pro with Workspace One? 
Ooh, good question. Um, I don't have the answer. Because I can now test drive it. Yeah, I I do believe that. Uh, let me see how I answer that one. Um, I do believe that we'll have potentially uh, further conversations with Apple on how we do that. Uh, the key item there is our VRXR hub solutions actually are expanding across multiple sets of uh, for various use cases, and and we truly believe there's a significant opportunity with the new uh, the new headset, um, uh, the VR headset, obviously the augmented reality. But that's going to be uh, something I myself have on my uh, wish list. So uh, look forward to sharing. As soon as I know, you'll know. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like it's 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 interesting to see. Even it feels like currently when I watch on social media, even some of some of the people who were like, it's like, yeah, this is this is completely useless. Why would anyone spend money on it? And it feels like that as soon as people actually get it on, and uh, I'm going to be in the US in a few weeks, and I'm at least going to stop by an Apple store. Potentially, I leave my credit card in the card in the car. Better for me, um, but um, it's uh, I'm going to give it a try myself because. It from everything so far, it's like yes, it has its flaws, but it feel it sounds at least like to be a similar experience like when they came first out with the iPhone and everybody was just like, yeah, who would ever pay that much for an iPhone? And hmm, enough people did, obviously, and it exactly. might be everything. Okay, I I, um, I found yeah. it amusing, Eves. Uh, mm -hmm. Just real quick comment on that: that immediately after launch, you had individuals in autonomous driving vehicles doing. The Vision Pro and the driver's seat. I was that was a, a kind of an interesting uh, take on that. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I mean that. that's 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 a risky thing considering that it's not looked through glass. It's basically a camera. As far as I understand, it's a camera, and it's it's a, like if the device fails, you don't see anything anymore. Um, so yes, I can do that with a Tesla, but I think. From what I saw in most of the videos, the police has its very clear definition of that's a no go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, Anything else you want to cover for for now? Anything else you want to share with us? Um, I mean, we covered roadmap, partner program, service providers. Anything else? Um, yeah, I, if I didn't say it, if I didn't say it before, um, I wanted to share again. Uh, I know that our leader Shankar Iyer had sent out a notification to the entire VMware partner ecosystem. We leverage that system for communication still. So as we continue moving forward, we'll we'll have uh, you know more communications coming out, which is critical for all our partners to know that. Uh, and I know that you share your content and you speak to agnostically right support for all types of partnerships. That's why I wanted to be on with you today. Uh, but we did relaunch the what was the previous customer lifecycle incentives for our technical assessments, POCs for proof of concepts, and deployments here in what is now our Q1. So that was as of uh, the beginning of February now, uh, being able to provide that. And we heard loud and clear. We got feedback across uh, our, obviously, our partner advisory council board meetings and our executive meetings and ultimately through Explore. So super excited to bring that back. And in addition to that, I said that we've maintained the program as is. We continue to support the front end pre-sales incentives all the way through the back end for our partners. And I think that's critical to know. Um, maybe we aren't, there's not enough information out there explained. So I'm, I'm happy to report that as well, that that's something that we're gonna continue working on and enhancing as we go and be looking for more information on the Partner Connect portal. You can still access and review all the terms, conditions, program guides uh, for more information. I wanted to share that with you. I think that's important because that's also important for customers to know that this actually opens up the door if you want to evaluate and if you want to actually get started uh, with either Horizon or Workspace One or both of them, or are in the transition from, let's say, on-prem VDI to a cloud-based VDI, that uh, there is, um, let's say, uh, funding support and things like that for partners available. So uh, don't hesitate to, to ping up your partner and say, it's like, hey, there is a project. Can we use any of these funds for it? And I think that's, that's a good advantage for everybody in the Absolutely agree. Uh, everybody wins, and more importantly, our customers win. So, um, yeah, that's that's all I had. I really appreciate the time, Eves. Thank you, Al, for being here. And I think we keep everybody updated. And if anything bigger actually shows up on the horizon in the end user computing space, then we come back together and share that and um, talk about that in one of the next shows. Thank Absolutely. you for being here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Appreciate it.